Hello YouTube, today we're going to be going over some practice problems, just some basic stuff for statistics, just kind of like the, the like beginning of statistics, kind of like classification studies, basic mean, median, mode, range, variance, um, standard deviation, things like that, um, and a little bit of probability too. Um, so I'm just going to go look at these practice examples here. So you have to classify each variable as either categorical or numeric. And pretty much if you have anything that's numeric, it has a unit to it. Anything that's categorical means it's just like divided into um, a separate, I guess, category. But yeah, okay. So let's look at the first one, flight capability. Volant or flightless? So can fly or cannot? That's a category. You cannot really measure that. So I'll just put it as C. Type of habitat, aquatic, ground terrestrial, aerial, terrestrial. Again, those are kind of like A, B, and C. Like you have these options as a category. It's also a category. Nesting site, um, tree. So these are just kind of like locations. Also a category. High or low. Uh, that one's kind of tricky, but it doesn't say like high in something or low in something. It's just one or the other, so it's categorical. Um, diet. Fish, vertebrae, vegetables, and vertebrates. Um, again, just categories of types of food, so a category. Body mass is in grams, so that's measuring um, mass. So mass is a numeric. Um, and then we have egg length in millimeters. That's a measure of length, so therefore it's numeric. Okay, so then we have the American Association of Nurse. Okay, this journal published... Da, da, da. Okay, so of 500 surger, surgical plants, patients, excuse me, randomly selected for the study, 51% used herbal or alternative medicines against their doctor's advice prior to surgery. What type of study is this? This is an observational study because we do not show the effects. They just simply count how many people use the drugs. Um, that's why. So next we have, do 500 surgical patients represent the population or the sample? Well, this is only 500 randomly selected as part of the sample um, uh, from the population, so it is a sample. There is not The city does not have an entire 500 people for their patients or the hospital or whatever. It's just a sample of it. Um, so pretty much uh, they only took 500 out of the total, so it's a sample. Um, then for each patient, what variable is measured? Well, it says in the problem, used herbal or alternative medicines. So that's pretty much what is being um, collected here. And this is categorical um, because it's pretty much saying they used it or they didn't. It's not by how much. So um, now we have, oops, what's going on? Okay, so now we have the simple problem here where we have 25 measurements that were obtained over 100 university students. Um, something about their eyes. Um, okay, so let's just find the mean and the median. So the mean, I hope you guys know how to do this. You simply add up all those digits and divide by the total number, which I believe is 25, 5 by 5, yeah. And you should get 0.1544. And then it asks for the median. Now is uh, the formula way you could do it, which is simply you take the uh, number of terms, which is 25, plus 1, which would be 26, divided by 2, which is 13. So you take the 13th term, but make sure you put that in order. Once you put it in order, you should get 0.11 as the 13th term. Uh, next, we want to find the range. The range, you simply take the largest value and subtract it from the smallest. I highlighted the largest value, which is 1.07, and you subtract it from your smallest, which should be 0.04, and you get the range to be 1.03. Now, the variance, uh, there's a formula for that as well. You simply take each individual value and subtract it from the mean or y bar, uh, the sample uh, uh, mean, and then you square each term, divide by n1 minus 1 to make the uh, it less bias, and then you take the, oh, don't take the square root. Yeah, you do take the square root. Wait, not yet. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you get 0 0.0388, and then you should get the variance to be 0 0.197, if I'm not mistaken. I might have done that uh, wrong, but just make sure you just square each term, and then you square root it is the standard deviation, so uh, the variance, that, that might be a, a mistake, but just go based off the formula. I believe this is um, mistaken. Um, so next we have, um, which is the outlier kind of out there, what's, it's the 1.07 is way far out there relative to the other data points, and again, it's an outlier. 
So last question, um, it says if you delete that outlier from the data, recalculate the mean and median. And what's most affected, the mean or the median? So the new sample size is 24 since we originally had 25, so I'm going to call it n prime. Um, and the formula for median, um, for an even number you have, you take the 12th term, or like halfway is for 24 is 12, and then you add 1, which would be the 13th term. Um, so you take the 12th term and the 13th term and divide it by 2. If you put them in order, you should get these two points and divide, and you get point uh, one zero five is the median. The mean, you do the same thing. You can use a formula, add all the digits up, divide by the total number. Um, in this case, we're excluding that 1.07, or 1.07, yeah, and then you get the mean to be 0.12. Now, compare that to the original mean, which is 0.1544, and the median, which was 0.11, it is clear that the mean is affected more by this difference. Um, okay, so now we have this other problem here where we have um, pretty much there's a fight that occurs or doesn't occur. And who wins or loses based off if they're the initiator? Um, and they give a sample here. And we're going to answer these questions. It says, what's the probability that the fight occurs and the initiator wins? So fight occurs and initiator wins. That uh, symbol there represents and. So you look for a fight and you say, okay, where does the fight occur? Fight occurs in this area. Where does the initiator win? That's right here. Out of the total, come on, out of the total, uh, which would give you 26 out of 167, so 26 out of 167, which is the total, and then you get 0.156 or 15.6%. Next question says, what's the probability of not having a fight? Um, that no fight occurs. Probability of no fight occurs is here, and this is the total probability divided by the, of no fight divided by the total probability. Um, and that would be, what's going on? Okay. 103 divided by 167, which is 61.7%. Next, we have the probability that there is no clear winner. So no clear winner is right here. That probability is there divided by 167. And we should get 35 divided by 167 is 21%. Next, we have uh, a probability that a fight occurs or the initiator loses. That U means or. Um, so the probability that the fight occurs, so that's here, and that's that total, so out of 167, so 64 out of 167, or the initiator loses. That would be 26 out of 167 as well. So you check that out here. What I do here plus oh wait a minute so you actually got it yeah so if you include these sixty four that's like you're saying add this plus this plus this um, but since the initiator loses it would be counting this variable twice so um, then you would add this as as well so you can just do this plus this or twenty six plus twenty three plus fifteen plus eleven divided by one sixty seven or you could do sixty four plus twenty six subtract fifteen divided by 167. Again, you subtract the 15 because of the overlap. You're counting that for that variable twice. Um, and then you should get your answer um, to be 11 over 167, which is about 50%, excuse me, 45%. Next it says, um, are th um, the events no clear winner initiator loses mutually exclusive? And to test for that, the probability of A union B must equal the probability of A plus the probability of B. So the probability of A, in this case, being no clear winner, um, is 35 over 167. And that comes from here, no clear winner out of the total. And the probability of B occurring, which is um, 26 out of 167. Um, so that's both of them combined. And again, that's also their independence as well. So since they're equal to each other, they're actually, in fact, ex mutually exclusive. Next we have um, probability that initiator wins given the fight occurs. So that line there means given. And um, so we look at the charts and we just look only here and we say a fight occurs. We know that. So when does the initiator win? The initiator wins here 26 out of 64 times. Um, so we look at that. And 26 out of 64 is about 40.6%. Then you do another one. You say, okay, what about if the initiator wins given no fight occurs? So you're looking at this here. No fight occurs. Initiator wins 80 out of 103. Um, 
and you get 77.7%. Finally, it's asking for no fight and initiator wins. Are they independent? So the independent formula you should know is probability of A or B, excuse me, A and B equals probability of A times the probability of B. Um, so the probability of A will be no fight, probability of initiator wins will be B. Um, and you simply get those values here. So the probability of no fight being 103 out of 167, and the probability of initiator wins um, is 106 out of 167. So you got those there, and then you multiply those together, you get 0.3915, which is 39.15%. Now the probability of no fight occurring and the initiator wins, no fight occurring would be here, and the initiator wins would be 80, out of the total, or out of the total, which was 103. Um, so you take a look at that. Excuse me, 11 out of 167. I forgot how I got that. Let me see. Um, oh, here it is. Initiator loses, I think, maybe what it was. Out of 167. <laughs> Might have wrote that wrong. Um, but anyway, you find out that the two probabilities do not match, and therefore they um, are not uh, independent. So this took, I have a ton more problems over here I wanted to look at, but I'll maybe do that later. Um, but I uh, hope this helped in terms of going through a few practice problems um, and just kind of getting uh, your brain going, thinking about uh, just some basic statistics.